I'm Carlo Rogers. Welcome to Four Wheel Drive Touring Australia. In Series 3, we travel up the Savannah Way from Queensland all the way to the Kimberley, taking in some epic fishing, lots of water crossings, and everything the Kimberley has to offer along the way. I feel dark and blistered and my mind was in some other zone. All around my memories, everything I'd ever done wrong. And every mistake I'd ever made was written in this burning country song. That is an 80 centimetre barramundi on the Pentecost. Oh, that's beautiful. Good stuff. That's what you come here for. And my head was bad, my eyes were closed, my two feet were dragging on the ground. And the hawks were doing their sucker work, they were marking me out for better things to come. But then the country changed you to start singing from a sweet and major key. And that melody, the heart to see, could lead a man to open tongue. This is absolutely stunning country. The Savannah Way is one of Australia's best outback drives. This is an epic track that goes from Cairns in Queensland all the way to Broome in Western Australia. That's over three and a half thousand kilometers of outback driving. We're talking red dirt, creek crossings, awesome pubs, and some of the best bear fishing in the country. In this episode, we're gonna be heading from Burktown, right at the base of the Gulf, all the way over to King Ash Bay in the Northern Territory, to try our hand at catching some fish. This is one of the great Australian journeys with classic outback tracks like the Gibb River Road, the Columbaroo Road, Cape Levesque, and of course, Australia's stunning top end. Burke Town is the self-professed barramundi capital of Australia. For me, it is also the real beginning of the Savannah Way. While this collection of tracks stretches from Cairns to Broome, this is where it turns to dirt for the first time, and I think, really becomes the Savannah Way of the imagination. This part of the country has always been a kind of borderland. Just west of Burktown is a tiny dot on the map called Hell's Gate. A century ago, this was the point at which Queensland's police would travel no further. To embark on a journey west was to enter a badland unpatrolled until you reached the safety of Catherine's native police. There's still a feeling of impending wildness that you get as you pull up to the roadhouse that stands here now, the last bastion of civilization for hundreds of kilometers to the west. Bill Olive lives a quiet life here at the Roadhouse, punctuated by the rains and by adventurous travelers keen to take the hard way west. This place is a long ways from the highway, a fact that defines it as much as anything else. Bill still sidles up to every passing vehicle to say hello or fill up the tank, just like he's always done. And you get the sense, passing through places like this in the outback, that you're filling up more than just your car. For me, Hell's Gate Roadhouse has always been the real gateway to the Savannah Way. You've been on the dirt a little while, it starts to feel like pretty wild country. And that's basically where the place got its name from. I mean, a little bit further west from here, there's a cut in the rock, and that was Hell's Gate. The local native police to the east of here basically would guarantee your safety, and uh, this was as far as they'd guarantee that. So beyond this was literally the wild west until you got to Catherine. 
Bill here runs the, the roadhouse. Yep. Bill, how long have you been here, man? Well, we built the roadhouse. We started on the 15th of September 1985. And we just kept growing and growing and doing things as it went. And uh, this is the end of it, the end product, sort of, after a long time. It's a bit of an oasis here. I mean, it looks amazing around here. It's the only green spot for a while here. Well, it's the last frontier, really, because we've got the range behind it, the constant range starts way down near Bullion and runs all the way up through here to MacArthur River and goes underground back up into the Kimberleys. It's the same range formation. We're on the, the northern side of it, which is a, classed as a silt country, and on the southern side of it is all the Black Soil Downs country going out around Camelwheel and that way. Good stuff to get stuck in. That. Good stuff to get stuck in. This is too, really, because you can sink up to two and three foot deep into it in a motor car if you get into a place where it hasn't been compacted. As you cross into the Northern Territory, the light changes almost imperceptibly. The scrub becomes sparse and the dirt redder with every kilometer. This is the open road, a place where anything can happen, with a feeling of freedom, like the dust that rises in pale clouds from the track, gets into everything, into your very pores. After the break, we hit King Ash Bay, home to some of the best fishing on the Gulf. King Ash Bay, about 700 kilometers southeast of Catherine, is right in the heart of Barra country. This tiny, self-sufficient community lives on the Credo. Come for the fishing, stay for the lifestyle. I've got to say, like, when I thought I'm coming to a fishing club, mm. I didn't have this picture. The, the infrastructure here is, is amazing. Well, as you've said, we're a fishing club, the King Ash Bay Fishing Club, but we're a lot more than a fishing club. Over time it's developed. What we've now got is uh, 500 acres of land that's leased from the Northern Territory Government on a perpetual lease. Um, and the club operates uh, caravan park campgrounds and we've got a bar and a uh, bistro, um, that sort of stuff. And the place becomes a hive of activity in the, in the dry season. We've probably got about 500 odd people here at the moment. So how many people come through here would be tourists compared mm. to club members that are in and out all the time? A surprising number are tourists. Um, we have, we estimate around 10 to 11,000 different people come through our uh, facilities every year. And my story is typical of pretty much everybody who now spends a lot of time here. We came here our first time about seven or eight years ago, intending to spend a week and move on to other places. We stayed six weeks. The next year we came back for six months and now we live here permanently. There's plenty of places you can spend the rest of your life that aren't as nice as this, isn't it? Well, that's right, that's it's right. It gets, gets, it gets a bit hot in the wet season. Does it? Um, and plenty of bugs and that sort of stuff. It's also got some very endearing qualities to it. Norm, thanks for taking the time to have a yak with me this afternoon. I appreciate it and we're going to spend a couple of days now and get around the place and have a good look around. Have a good look around. You'll see there's plenty here. It's not just about the fishing. Awesome, mate. Thank okay, you. Good, good on you. Thanks, thanks mate. Fun. Appreciate it. Carlisle's inside the bar here somewhere. I'm just going to go in and find him. Hopefully he's got a beer ready for me. How you going? Yeah, good mate, how are you? I got you, Coldy. You've done exceptionally well, there's no doubt about that. This is a nice bar. This place is amazing. I mean, uh, I've been to a lot of Outback bars, a place like that. This place really has a family feel to it. It's real, everyone, seems like they're your new mate. I've never seen anything like it. It's a club for people who actually get out and enjoy life, I think. There's people who aren't members, and they seem to be made as welcome as the people who are. Mate, living the dream. I woke up early the next morning on a mission 
to catch more fish than Craig. Gary is one of the local gods, and he had some secret spots up his sleeve. Meanwhile, Craig headed out with Daniel to try his luck. Gary, this is a big net. Now, when you throw it, it goes out into a beautiful circle and catches fish. When I throw these things, it just sinks like an old wet rag. So what is the secret to throwing a cast net? I guess there's a little bit of a bit of an art to it. To start off, just sort of looping it yep. in your hands like this, one way, and, and the, all the net the same way as well. Yep. Okay. Then I drag it out and I make sure there's no tangles or sticks caught in the bottom of it because that can make it all tangle up as well. And I'll just run my hand down and pick it up in the middle of the net. I'll just run my hand down the left hand side of the net here, make a small loop. And the right hand side, same thing. And I can just pick the net up. It looks so simple. Have my hand at the front here. So you grab that other edge there. Just walk my fingers so it's basically all, and then when I can let go, see it all just falls out of my hand. Pretty, pretty easy really once you get the hang of it. Basically half the weight in each hand. Mm -hmm. This hand higher, this one lower. And then it's just basically like throwing a discus. This hand I've got to let go first, mm -hmm. and then this one a split second after. Okay, cool. Let's see how I go. Let's see if I can throw a cast net. It's not bad. It's not bad. You're not a bad teacher, Gary. Hey, how long have you been in King Ash Bay? Oh, I've been here for two years. Come up here for a month holiday, stayed seven months, and yeah. then applied for a job. How come everyone I talk to in King Ash Bay says, I come up here for a couple of days and I've been here for 20 years or two months or three years or whatever it is. It's just a really nice, relaxing lifestyle here. It's just, yeah, it's just... You have a nice relaxing lifestyle, no stress. People actually tell you to slow down here. Fair dinkum. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Big blue salmon. That's a good fighting fish. How big do these guys get? Oh, two or three times that size. All well, good all day, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Ah. Here's another one. Two salmon. How good is this? Two salmon. Almost as many minutes. This is, this is the dream. Now I've got what's called a knot. <laughs> That's what I've done. Try and work out how to get it back through. <laughs> you need that one, Betty? Yeah, she's gonna fight as soon as you pull onto the surface. Now. Beautiful. That is the biggest queenie I've ever caught. There it goes. Still got, still got a couple more species to take off the list this morning. <laughs> Mate, all I know is that we've caught nothing, and if Carlisle's out there killing a pig, I'm never gonna hear the end of it. After the break, Craig finally snags something big. Yep. 
beautiful fish. Beautiful well, these guys eat really well too. Yeah, well, he's good eating. Well done, Carlo. Cheers, mate. Beautiful. Look at this thing. Look at those colors. That's an awesome fish. That's not exactly where you want the lure, but these things will happen every now and then when you go fishing. Mate, you want to nip that off for me? Sorry, mate. Daniel, the uh, ship's doctor, is going to uh, get it out for me. That's how not to do it. So next time you're out fishing, try and keep yourself away from the lures. Oh yeah. yeah it's got some weight on it. Whatever it is. Oh. Another card. Yes. Yes. This is a beautiful fish. Second cod. Like five minutes the sea eagles are hunting around us. This is insane. You should name this place Cod Corner, mate. So I've just run into Sang. Sang's a professional crabber up here. And uh, he's asked me to come on board and see what he does with these crabs. So I'll just jump on. Is that all right, mate? Yep, you're all right. How are you, Sang? Good, good. Mate, what have you been doing this morning? Um, I just did a run, um, checking my crab pots this morning. Give us a look what you got in the hole. Yeah, yeah. So, all these crabs here, they've been uh, checked for uh, sizes, um, if they're legal. So what do you do with them now? Uh, just tie them up. Right, eh? You want to show us how you do it? <laughs> right, just get your piece of twine or string, um, just across the back underneath your foot. Just bring it underneath the two claws. Bring it close, close up to the body. Just get it properly restrained there. And then just up underneath the swimmers again. Flip them over. And then just do it. Just do two knots there. Mate, I, um, that way it's really, really restrained and it won't bite it, any other crabs. I note you've still got all your fingers, so you must be yeah. good at the job. Restrained crab. Got him. Trained by Sang. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. I won't Told say you. that was easy, but I'm sure after you've done nah. it a few times, you get it. Up it, mate. Up it. Oh. That was just out of nowhere. Guys, that was out of nowhere. Jesus. I'm going to take it right up, man. I'll be put on the show right next to the boat. We caught a few of these already, so I'm gonna put this guy back in the water. Back at the camp, Craig and Daniel didn't come home empty handed. What we do is stir around, go okay, and make sure she's right, and then we just close the lid and let it cook away. How long do we let it cook for, mate? Oh, probably five, five to ten minutes. Until, until the crab actually goes red. Or we'll we better have a beer for ten minutes. Yes, yeah, why not? Let's go have a beer and we'll wait. Right, eh? This is the reason you don't swim in the Northern Territory. So here's the saltwater crocodile. These guys are all up and down the banks up here. I don't know if you can see what I can see from here, but this guy's got a really pretty smile, isn't he? Isn't he beautiful though? Look at the colors on his tail. You see these guys in pictures and stuff, but being this close is really cool. So we're gonna see how close we can get to this guy. Try and get a nice photo of him. What are you reckoning? Yeah, they're pretty cooked now. You reckon they're right? Yep. We'll turn him off? Yeah, we can turn him off. What's next? Well, I think the next thing is um, walk into it. I'm 
is not better than not bad, mate. That's good. After a long day out on the water, we figured the only way to top that would be a night out on the water. Borolula Houseboats lets you hire one of their boats for the day or the week. It's a great way to experience the MacArthur River from a different perspective, and probably the laziest camping available here at King Ash Bay. This is an awesome houseboat. There's room for about 30 people. There's decks fore and aft. But best of all, I get to drive it. I get to be Jolly Rogers. This is awesome. What an awesome day here at King Ash Bay. This place has everything. Great camping, a bar right next to the campground, and some of the best fishing I've ever done. I had a great day, Craig. How about you? I all had the best day. Fishing, crabbing, top it off, night out on a houseboat. How good is this? I don't think it gets any better. It's another day of living the dream, mate. Cheers. Tune in next week. We'll be visiting the million-acre Lorella Springs Station, a fishing, four-wheel driving, and camping mecca. Mm -hmm.